guys, I'm Annabelle Vi- Let's try this again. Hey guys, I'm Ariel Vine Bovine, and this is your more of the day. Sorry I've not been so visual lately, um, haven't really been networking either, because I've been feeling like a total poop lately. Um, I have resorted myself to going back to my rubber band bracelet hobby. Rubber band bracelet hobby. There isn't a lot right now that you're seeing, but yeah. Because I... Because I've been giving them away already. Um, and not been working out like I should be. And pretty much. Um, no. What happened? Oh, boy, I've been falling off the map. I'm sorry that I'm not visually as appealing as usual today. Um, it is allergy season. Today, me and my mom took the day to just watch Doctor Who, just hang out the house and, like, catch up on sleep and such because we're both exhausted. I've been getting around six to seven hours of sleep a night, and I used to get eight to ten. So, I'm sleep deprived. I'm not used to it, and I don't know why. I'm just, like, my body just does not want to sleep, and the rest of my body hates it for it. Um, as well as, now that I have been working out, um, before I had back pains and it got a little worse after I started working out, my joints and stuff got a little worse. So now that I'm working out again, um, I'm in a lot of pain again. So, it makes it a little difficult to keep vlogging and doing things like a normal person would be. Um, so yeah. So on with our soap. Today, um, finally, I took a nap. I'm starting to feel a little better. Like, my stomach still doesn't, like, feel good. Like, I still just don't feel well. But I feel well enough to be able to do a video for you guys. Um, come to find out, there was another take. So people were, like, wondering how many videos I was going to do on Days of Silence and all that. On Silence Day, I actually did have two videos. One is on my phone. But not physically online because it never uploaded for some reason. So I gotta like work on it and see what happened with it. I haven't been able to really take a good look at it and see what happened. But it basically just describes more of what the day is, what it means to us Whovians and things like that. Um, I got more flavors of my lean shakes. So for those of you who liked those videos, more of those videos will be coming. Um, and I'm changing my days again, I'm sorry, I keep changing them around, but I'm still trying to figure out, it's kind of working with me, my schedule's like constantly changing around me, and so it's kind of difficult to figure out, you know, what will work one day, what will work another day. Um, I think that I've figured out that we will have our workout Wednesdays. So I'm going to talk more about the shakes, more about my workout routine, stuff like that on Wednesdays. Um, I know Makeup Mondays, I'm going to kick the side. I haven't done a makeup vlog in a while. Or like, I haven't really done a um, like a makeup, special effects makeup in a while. And those will be coming out more toward the summertime, will be coming out more, just because for me, with the extent of the makeups I do, it is a little difficult to do it one person, um, one animal is, bad, is like, he'll have Memorial Day off, but I think that we might be out of town. Um, which brings me to my next announcement, but hold on, hold on. Um, so, when it gets closer to summer break, which is this coming up month, kids start getting out of school and stuff, um, there will be, you know, more people around my house. So it'll make it a little easier for me to do vlogs and things, because there's going to be more going on, as well as, drum roll please, I will be very pleased with you if you actually did that drum roll. Anyways, so... This Saturday, the 3rd, is the opening of Six Flags Great America by us. Um, we know that you guys in St. Louis and other places already have your Six Flags open. We hate you. You know what? We 
hate you. You ours takes forever to open. Ours usually takes all the way until like the first week of May. So it's usually the first Saturday of May actually. And then yeah, we have to wait until Memorial Day weekend for the water park to open. <sighs> Anyways, we had a really harsh winter though, and it's still kind of icky outside. It's gonna it's either it's either like hot or freezing here right now. Um, which is not normal for us. We're still, they're saying that we're still in a polar vortex. Um, so I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great. That means it can snow any day. And if you were really interested, I shall. Hold on. Let's check the weather here. See, so you guys understand how terrible it is here. Today it is 59 degrees, which, okay, you guys are like, oh, that's not bad. Or 47. It feels like 52, it says. We have a 60% chance of rain. We always have a chance of rain, and it always rains. Um, tomorrow it's going to rain. The next day it is going to have a thunderstorm. The next day it's going to rain. The next day it's going to be freezing. The next day it's going to be freezing. The next day it's going to be freezing. When we go to... to of the Six Flags on Saturday, it will be a high of 58 and a low of 38. So it'll still be, you know, freezing. Um, but this week, our videos are going to be more Six Flags based just because I'm getting ready for it. And it's a really big deal for me. I love, I grew up in that place. Um, so I'm just looking up online right now. The Six Flags packing list. What people have decided that we need to... It, my Google thought that right at that moment it needed to kick on for once. Um, six flags packing list. Well, we're going to look at the six flags packing list. So we're going to Travel Trips USA today, I think is what it said. Um, USAToday.com, pack list for Six Flags. Six Flags visitors can fit all they need for a day at the park in a well-stocked backpack. Six Flags operate theme parks, including water parks, wildlife theme parks, and throughout the United States, Canada, and Mexico. For many guests, a successful Six Flags trip depends on the proper preparation, which is really true. Um, in Gurney, you have to keep in mind if you are from where I am from. I love how how everyone asks me like, where are you from? Because your videos are kind of confusing. Actually, I'm from the Elgin, Chicago area. So if you're over there on our side of things, then it can be warm. But if you go over to the Gurney side of things, you're freezing cold. It's like I think it's like a five to ten degree difference, which people think is weird, but that's how Illinois is. But then if you go down by Carbondale, where most of my friends are going, who are going to be going, um, when you go to, down by SIU right now, it's probably like 70 degrees, and you guys are all wearing shorts, and we're up here like our sweater's freezing. That's just how it is all the time. Um, essentials may get overlooked when playing a day at Six Flags. You need identification, money, credit cards, wallets, keys, house keys, and a small zipper pouch and placed inside of the backpack. Give a second set of keys to another person traveling with you, as well as phone numbers for your banking institutions. Should a bag get misplaced, you and the other members of your party won't get trapped at the theme park. Which is good. Um, bags don't usually... Okay, keep in mind, I've been going to Six Flags ever since I was really, really little. Um, which, my dad has pictures of me and him on... This is back at Rapid when I was, like, three. So, I've been there ever since I was really, really little. I'm used to the park. I know, like, every part of the park. Um, I know it better than you think, like, the back of my hand. Like, literally, I don't know what every single line on this is, but I know every single place in the park. I know that if I turn one way, I'll get to a bathroom. If I turn the other way, I'll hit a bunch of fast food joints. Um, I know the area around it. <coughs> Excuse me. I know if you go one way, you hit a Target. If you go the other way, you hit Overwise at a couple restaurants. Um, I know that um, there is 
a restaurant called Avalon that we used to eat at with my dad when I was younger. And it is kind of similar to if you guys are familiar with places like Around the Clock. And um, there's this my like, take across the way that is from a type of an, like almost like an American Legion's place. Like I know that well of the area just because I've been to Six Flags since I was little. I love Six Flags and I'm obsessed with Six Flags. So my dad is like a huge theme park enthusiast. We've been going here since I was little. So I'm used to it. Um, so, misplacing baggage, I don't remember ever really losing things. My mom lost a sports, our sports bottle last year. I remember that. I think she, like, lost it when we were going to a ride or something. Like, she put it somewhere, and that's like, which, make sure you don't lose your sports bottles, because those are easy to lose. Especially if you have multiple people in your party, and you have three or four sports bottles, it may be hard to track and notice, like, you notice, like, oh, I have my sports bottle in the pouch of my backpack. That's easy to find. But if you're carrying, like, three, and all of a sudden you're carrying two, you don't really notice as much. Um, so keep track of them, because they do not keep them. Which is what we learned. And my phone is not working very well. Um, for what we learned is they do not keep them for you. They just basically, like, we got lucky and found ours. They basically just tell you to buy a new one um, if you lose it. And those are kind of, ex they're kind of expensive if you don't go to, like, for us it was worth it because we go to six, we have season passes, go all the time, you know. So they worth it for us. If you're just going for a day, and drinks are expensive there, they're like seven bucks a drink, or you can spend... So, sorry, I'm trying to, like, differentiate prices between if you're a season pass holder or if you're a regular person. I think it was about $12.99 per sports bottle plus a $3.99 refill during non-peak season, a $5.99 refill for all day for a peak season, which is usually the summertime where everyone goes, or Fright Fest would be the $5.99 price. It was just beginning of the year, it was $3.99, which we think they might be doing again. Um, so it gets expensive. Or you can spend one ninety nine for a one refill. But just either just do an all day refill, just keep drinking it. Make sure you're constantly refilling it so that way it makes it more worth it. Make sure you keep your wristband, otherwise they are kinda of mean about the wristbands. Um, what we do is we slip it on the water bottle, make sure it doesn't fall off. Or if we feel unsecure about it or think it's gonna fall off, we tell them right away, say, Hey, can you replace my wristband? You know, I'm afraid it's gonna fall off or whatever, whatnot. And they're pretty nice about replacing them. Um Rain year, yes, yes. Um, our Six Flags, it doesn't. It's not like all of a sudden it's going to start raining. Sometimes that happens, but usually, like you got to watch the weather. When anytime you go to a place, you have to watch the weather. Um, usually, if it says that there's a chance of rain, you should bring a poncho. I don't recommend bringing umbrellas. It makes it really difficult to do things unless you think that you're going to stay in one spot. Um, it's really difficult to try to hold the umbrella and things like that because you're going into large crowds of people. Um, there are places for you to, of course, hit, take shelter in a storm, but it's really hard to. It's really crowded um, because I know we had one storm last year where you could literally see the rain coming at you. It was during a start of a show, and all of us like ran into, if you guys know where French is, um... And if you guys don't really know the parks as well, for Six Flags Great America, it is that first, when you're first coming in to Hometown Square, that line of shops, there is, the closest one is by Wizard, it's a funnel cake shop, and then you go along and there's other shops, Frenchies is basically, um, like candy themed shop, you can get fudge there, things like that, um, I don't think it might not be called Frenchies anymore, but to me it was called Frenchies when I was little, so it was always called Frenchies to me. Um, but that's where that is. So, rain ponchos. Yeah, carry like lightweight ones. You don't like make sure you fold them all up, and then like make sure you keep the bag that it comes in, so that way when afterwards you can fold it all up, it doesn't get your backpack all messy. It's usually what we do. Um, they don't recommend carrying an umbrella, I don't either. 
spread out ponchos in the grass for a rest between roller coaster rides. No, don't do that. Um, simply just because you're not going to have it when you come back. Um, come on, guys. This is real world here. Things get, you know, misplaced, lost, or stolen. Things get stolen. You got to be careful. Keep everyone safe playing ahead. Pack sunscreen, reusable water bottles, prescriptions, medical insurance cards, um, baby wipes, and extra bags on hand. They come in handy for storing digital cameras on water rides and things. Um, for water rides, your stuff really doesn't get wet. They have bins outside of the water ride to keep it in, and they stay pretty dry. And really, you don't have, don't think you have any issues. Other than your clothing, like, sometimes it's uncomfortable. Like, my mom has an issue with if you're wearing socks and gym shoes, and they get wet, she had this issue in Disney that your, your feet are uncomfortable. I really don't have that issue. I just let myself dry out in the sun. It doesn't really bother me to, like, get my hair wet or whatever. I'm just like, yeah, water ride, let's go. I'm not the type of person who is just like, I'm not getting wet. This is disgusting. I can't do this. You know, I'm just not the type of person. A first aid kit. They have first aid kit on the premises. Um, I know exactly where it is. I'm trying to explain, like, what rides are next to it. I'm like, I know it's by this shop, this shop, and this shop. I can name all shops. Um, first aid is by... Oh, dear. Um, East River Crawler? Yes. No. I know right next to it, because it's on this side of the, sh the, the the road or the street, it's on this side, you know, when you're going left, past, when you're coming from hometown, it is on your left, they have a big sign and whatever, it's got the red cross on it so you know it's, you know, or anyone can direct you toward it, it's actually a really small place, you just walk right in, it's air conditioned, they can help you with my mom. First time we were there was actually um, last season because my mom got stung by a bee really bad, so they gave her, you know, this little capsule, she like broke it, and then she rubbed it, and it was um, to stop the itching and the painkiller, like itch and painkiller, like all in one, it was kind of crazy, this. but it worked. Um, and they have like ice, they have water, ice water there in case you get dehydrated. So it's a good thing to keep in mind, just in case. Um, this is antiseptic creams and things like that. I don't really bring a lot of that kind of stuff with. Um, we usually bring things like allergy medications and stomach medicines because, like for us, we've kind of gotten used to it after a while. Like stomach medicine for me because. Um, I get sick in the heat, so when I get sick in the heat, I have to hurry up and eat food, and my stomach gets kind of queasy, and it's a big mess. So, um, like stomach medications, Tums, anti-diarrheal for, you know, in case you think that you're going to have that, go into that issue, you know, things like that, because you're eating park food, and not everyone is used to eating park food, um, it's pretty much like fries. Hot dogs, chili dogs, corn dogs, chicken tenders, barbecue burgers, pizza, spaghetti, regular burgers, salads. I'm tr I don't think I've actually left anything out. I think I'm pretty good on, you know, basic meal park food. Um, as I've been there how many times. Um, they do have a dining plan if you are a season pass holder that I highly recommend. It pays itself off in a couple um, times dining. So, And you get, with it you technically get free after you pay a certain amount. I think it was $79.99. Um, and after that you just show them your season pass, they swipe it for each dining, you get a lunch and dinner every day, which is pretty nice. Um, bringing an AAA card into the park, um, okay, yeah, so an AAA card is very important. If you guys have that because you can get discounts in the park, discounts on shopping, disc in their, um, I don't think they have any more um, 
a special line for getting in. Like, they have, they don't really have lines for, like, getting first unless you get a flash pass, which is very, which is pretty expensive for a day, actually. Some people do that, and they're like, oh, this is great. If you're a season pass holder, do not get a flash pass. It makes no sense to you, because there's going to be days where there's, like, no one in the park, you're like, why did I spend the money on that flash pass this one day? <laughs> if you have some people that, like, only have one day to spend there, I actually recommend spending two days at the park so you can actually enjoy it, because you never know what's going to happen. Um, if there's a thunderstorm, they shut down pretty much all the rides, and it really stinks. So, you kind of got to watch out for the days you're going and pick wisely. Um, because they don't really... you know, refund or any of that. So you got to be really careful of safety. Um, as well as another thing is you get in early and get discounts in the park, I think on food and on souvenirs. So I remember right, if you have a Discover card. So I don't think you have to use your Discover card. I think you just have to show your Discover card for some stuff. Some stuff you have to actually purchase with your Discover card. So keep that in mind if you guys would want to. Um, sometimes it's nice to get into that, that special line the special entry line when you first enter the park because it gets really busy on those lines. Some days lines are so long some days that's so really good. You can get there early or get there late. Never get there on time is what I, my best thing I can ever tell you. Um, if you're not one of, one of those people who has to be there at the drop of the gate, then get there an, half an hour to an hour early. So then that way you can beat some of the lines. Even though you're going to be standing there for a while, we got technology. We've got phones now. You guys can be doing Angry Birds. Um, we don't do Angry Birds anymore, do we? I'm trying to think of the new game we do now. Um, I'm trying to think. We do Meow Meow Star Acres, which is like Farmville and cats combined. Um, so we do that one. Um... Candy Crush, that's what I couldn't think of. I'm like, what game is there that everyone does now? Candy Crush, you're whatever you gotta do. Check your emails. Um, it makes more sense than, you know, not being able to do that. So that's important to you. If not, don't arrive, like, don't push it and don't arrive until half an hour to an hour later. And then be able to enjoy the park. You might be losing a little bit of time throughout your day, but it'll be easier to get into the park. Um, otherwise, if you come right on time, usually there's a humongous line. Um, your cameras, um, some people like to print out the park maps ahead of time. It's really difficult on Six Flags website. It's very confusing. It's hard to print out it ahead of time. What I would suggest, if you're one of those people that has to plan and has to plan, what you can do is just look up, um, like look up their rides and things. And on there, they've got pretty good descriptions of what things are and what, they could be for different members of your family. Um, so basically what I recommend is to sit there and just list out what you really, really want to see. Or if you're just going by, then be like, hey, I want to ride that. And just go through the park that way. Um, I will, I'll tell you guys more about, like, you know, walking the parks and doing that later this week. Um, this is just to get you guys started in thinking about if you're going um, maybe this weekend or the weekends to come, what you need to know that you should bring. Um, they're telling you the digital camera and extra batteries. Okay, I think that this is the one that's really old because it keeps telling me about lockers and things. Six Flags does have lockers to store your things at the beginning of the park. I think they still have some for some attractions if you feel like comfortable with that. They used to have, I think they haven't had that since I was like in seventh or eighth eighth grade, where you had to put everything in a lock, you were not allowed to bring any bags of any type in line to the ride, that is no longer the case. They have um, these new bins where you can store things, and they actually interlock, so when you, so the only people that will have them in your cubbies, their cubbies, and the only people, and then the door sl slides over, so the only people who will be able to get into the door of your cubbies are the people on the ride with you, which secures yourself a little better. I feel safer with it just because if people are on the ride with you, they're going to be the only ones in those cubbies, so it's not really like, you know... Bob on the next ride is going to steal something because he's not on the ride with you where the rest of the stuff is. They're not going to allow that. And they watch the stuff pretty well. Um, there's about three attendees manning each ride. 
at least, and there's always one that's that's kind of watching, seeing who puts what where, just to make sure, okay, if this girl, you know, put over the pink bag, and this guy that's not, not with their party picks up this pink bag, could there be something wrong, you know, type of thing, but at the same, thing, at the same time, they are not you know, liable for any of the items you put in there. It's just, I've never had an issue. Um, again, the sites keep talking about those lockers, so they must be old. Um, they no longer make you put everything in a locker, because people were upset about that and had to bring change, because it was like 25, they had to bring quarters, because I think it was like a dollar a locker, and it's just a mess. If you are thinking about doing lockers, I'd recommend just bringing, you know, a bag full of quarters so you can do those things. They do do press pennies in some of the shops, I think, still. If you're a presser, penny presser, I don't know what you would call yourself, a penny presser, um, then you can still do that. <coughs> Allergy season, I told you. Um, so, yes, and bring your camera because there are definitely places where you can take pictures or they have of course photo things available to you it's a little expensive though prohibited items pro 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 prohibited prohibited items at six flags you can bring your baby food and paper with special dietary needs but if you have a special dietary need they have to have a doctor's note you have a bunch of granola bars in your bag or a, a sweet bun, it could be that you don't want to spend money to buy snacks in the park. Or it could mean that you have diabetes and need to regulate it in a certain way and you know these items work and you're afraid that the park doesn't have these items. So if you have a special dietary need, bring a note from your doctor. Otherwise, they will not let that stuff into the park. They'll make you either scarf it down in front of them or throw it away in the, and they have a garbage um, as you're entering security, they check everything just in case. It's just to keep everyone safe. One of those kind of things. Um, and baby food, if you have baby food, you, you're allowed to keep that. Um, you can't have coolers or food items in the actual park. A lot of people go tailgating inside, um, the parking lot and just leave everything in their car. That's okay. Of course, they're not going to check your car, you know. Um, that's how we used to do it when I was younger. It made it cheaper. Food is expensive. Um, food, a plate, there's like ten ninety nine a plate. Um, and yes, it is a decent amount of food, but some people, like, if you have ten ninety nine a plate for how many people and you're trying to do, you know, a summer thing on a budget, it might not be the best thing for you. There are fast food things outside of the park. There are other options, of course. Um... I'm not saying that you have to eat, like, some people, like, if you're going to Disney, yes, you have to eat in the park because it's different experiences, different types of food. When you're eating at Six Flags, it is pizza, and it is, like, you know, it's, it's park food, so it's not as necessary. Like, for me, if I was a child and I was going to Six Flags, I would rather be, you get me that special Six Flags light-up toy than eating pizza at Six Flags. You know what I mean? Like, I might not want to leave the park to eat or whatever when I might get cranky about that, but at least with a souvenir, you can bring it home and spend the money on that instead of spending the money on food that you can get somewhere else. And Because they're not going to remember th that piece of pizza that they ate, you know, but they will remember, you know, that special toy that spins and blows bubbles or whatever and whatnot. Just things to keep in mind. Um... You can't bring fireworks, lawn chairs, magic markers, aerosol cans, glass bottles, knives, clothing with spikes, and jewelry, firearms, wagons, or shoes with wheels. Yes, you cannot bring your Heelys into the park because someone actually brought their Heelys into the park. Um, most of the things that they tell you not to bring is because someone actually did this and was dumb. And we're different parts of us. Someone brought Heelys into the park and, and ran into something and almost fell off of um, one of the bridges, and that's why you can't bring Heelys into the park. As crazy insane as that sounds, that's actually why you can't bring Heelys into the park. That is just not safe. Um, not that we really wear Heelys anymore. The, if you guys don't know what those were, those were the shoes with the wheels that every child had to have and every teenager had to have for about a year and a half that were really, really expensive and that there were um, 
millions and millions and millions of people trying to copy them, and they just weren't Heelys. Like, I think I had knockoff Heelys. Um, because, you know, at that age, I did not care if they said Heelys on them. I just wanted the wheels at the bottom so I could just roll around the wall, and then I kept falling on my butt, or the the wheel would get stuck in it, and it just would not, like, like, I had the ones where you push the button and the heel went back in the wheel went back in, so then that way you can actually, like, walk with the shoes, um, instead of having to use the tool and get it out like the heel is where, so I was happy about those, but then sometimes it would get stuck, and so then I was stuck with this wheel, and then I would fall on my butt, and it just wasn't cool. Um, if you are a crocheter like my mom, and you have those itty bitty, itty bitty, little scissors to cut your yarn, they will try to confiscate them from you. You cannot have those. Um, if you're a crocheter, and if you have to have those itty bitty little scissors to be able to cut your yarn because um, you don't go on the rides because you're my mom. Um, <laughs> my mom can't, doesn't go on the rides for health reasons. She can't. So she just sits and crochets all day long. Um, and so she has to have like little scissors or a little something just to cut the yarn, you know, to be able to make just to make your any squares, I have to do this or that. She kind of just shoves them into her yarn or something. Like, she's got to do something. Um, so there's no way. And seriously, if you have a mother with a bag of crochet, with a bag of crochet things, and these little itty bitty little scissors, I don't think that she'd be harming anyone anyway. It doesn't matter if it's right fast. Um, because you get called on that sometimes. Um, knitting needles, if they are to, um, things like crocheting and knitting things are to the person's discretion. Like, they got used to my mom and realized that every single time she comes, she's going to bring crochet and knitting stuff, and that's all she's going to do at the park. And she's just one of those moms that's going to sit there like this, watching her children play with her little camera, you know. She's just a mom. Um, so they're just like, after a while, they just kind of knew her and just like, all right, you know, you're the crocheter, there you go. Um, but if they, if you're really sharp, like knitting needles, crochet things, things like that, they will kind of, like, maybe take another second to check you or ask if, like, ask your supervisor, you know, if this is okay, because not a lot of people do that at Six Flags, and so they kind of question it a little, like, are we allowed, because technically if they are needles, are they allowed to have these in the park because they can stab someone, you know, someone can get hurt by these. Um, so, you know, if you have that happen to you, it's not just you. They're not picking you out or anything. It's just that they want to make sure everyone's safe. And you gotta understand that. Um, other things recommended. I'm trying to think. Sunscreen. Highly recommended. Um, there is, su like, you don't, okay, it might be outcast, but you get, su I get sunburned when it's outcast out a lot. Because you go high into the clouds with these roller coasters, and then your shoulders get burned like mine do, and then all of a sudden I have this tan, and I don't know why. So you have to make sure you have sunscreen, as you burn up, and then it's just not, it was pleasurable of an experience. Um, if you were like me, and your lips get sunburned and wit and wind burned in the summer, and if you know me and did not need to know about that about me, I'm sorry, but they do, um, one of my closer friends that are watching this right now are probably laughing because they know what I'm talking about <laughs> and how I'm sitting there, like, I sit there with, like, the medicated chapstick and just, like, for five minutes, and then the next couple minutes later, I'm just, like, because my lips will absorb that much. Um, you need to bring chapstick. You need to bring medicated lip balm, and if you don't, there's something wrong with you. Um, even if you're not the type of person, I still recommend it because... If you're going on these rides high in the air at fast paces, um, your skin and your 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 skin and your lips are gonna take a toll. If you're one of those people that has really dry hands, you might want a little thing of moisturizing lotion. Just because if you're those people that where your skin cracks and stuff like mine does, because I get dry skin now and I don't know why. But it's just one of those things where they tell you that your body's gonna change at a certain age, you don't believe them, and then it starts happening and then you get all freaked out because why is my hair oily, and why is my skin drying out, and this makes no sense, it's a horrible combination, um, then you need to stay prepared for that, um, yes, because my skin is really, really dry, and I don't know why, and then my lips get really, really dry, and then they burn, and then they hurt really badly, and everyone laughs at me, everyone, and then people ask me why my lips 
are fire truck red all of a sudden? Even like you guys know that this. Okay, so this is like my natural, like you know, rose. Like my lips are just gonna be really, really rosy. I don't feel good right now, so they're a little. Actually, they're a little lighter than they usually are. They're a little redder than that. But then all of a sudden, my lips are like fire truck red. They're like, oh, it's a really good lipstick. Thanks. I went to Six Flags for the past three days in a row. <laughs> that is why my lips look like this. Um, so for me, that's what happens, actually, which is not too cool, I must say. So, so make sure you bring, if you're a female, you need to bring those type of care products. If you were a male, don't be afraid to sneak some chapstick in your pants. So then that, and then like, so then that way it kind of sneaks, you know, past your lady's view because guys are like, oh, I'm so manly. Like, my brother's like that. I'm so manly. I don't need chapstick. And then he's got, like, his lips are all cracking. Dude, you need some chapstick. So don't be afraid to bring chapstick or any of that because you're going to need it. Um, especially if you're not used to all the rides and doing all that all the time, then you're going to need something. Um, swimsuit. If you're going to the water park, you need a swimsuit. They will not let you on any of the attractions unless you're wearing a swimsuit. And there's no exception, no nothing. So people have one, like, their shorts. Like, you know how they have... They're across the room, I'm not going to go get them. So you know how the girls have these shorts? And they're short shorts. And they're like a jean material, but they're in rainbow colors. You can't wear those in the water. They will tell you to go put on a swimsuit. Um, you need a swimsuit, you need a towel. They do not provide towels. And you need money if you want to get a tube just to, like, hang out in the wave pool. Because they don't provide those, you have to buy them. Which kind of stinks. I think it's two dollars a tube and then like maybe three dollars for a two person tube um i don't usually do that i just usually like sit in the water or go tan so i do a lot more of the slides and like slides i'll do and things like that but i'm not the type of person who just like kind of sits in the tube all day long so it's not exciting i'd much rather be on a ride um so that's what i do so I don't know much about the tubes. You'd have to look that up if that was your case. You probably have that information on the Six Flags website. And money. You need to bring money. There will be things that you are surprised that you need to purchase. Um, whether it is the little kid who is in love with Batman just pulling on your shirt because you will not give them that, that darn Batman watch that they need that is vital for their existence. And how they cannot tell time because they do not have this exact Batman watch. And then you have to buy the child the Batman watch before um, he starts crying and everyone starts staring at you. Um, either it's that case or it's you're not feeling good and you really need a pretzel. Because that is bready and that will actually make you start feeling better. Or you really, really need a drink and it's really, really hot and it's hotter than you expected. Like you need extra money more than you were planning just in case of these things. Um, because a lot of people don't expect certain things to happen. As well as, I'm trying to think of all the things that you really need to bring. A sweater. I don't care if it's 70 degrees, 80 degrees, 90 degrees. Because when it gets nighttime, it's going to get cold. I'm sorry if it's not that way where you're from. But in Illinois, that's how it is. At nights it gets cold. And I made a mistake one time when I was going to Six Flags to school because the schools around here take you to Six Flags. That's just how it was when I was growing up. So I made the mistake of wearing cut off jeans. This is back when you um, actually cut your jeans into capris and that thing was cool to do and then your parents yelled at you. It was usually those older jeans. Like it was really really popular when I was younger to have jeans were so long they dragged on the ground they looked disgusting and then when the summertime came it, cut, it became cool to just cut them off. And then you had Capri's, um, which made um, parents that did not have a lot of money, I think, very happy. Because they didn't have to keep buying you pants that you just me messed up that they spent money on. Anyways, so that was very cool. So I had these, and, like, they were a little more worn. It wasn't like they were old or anything. It's just that when you're a kid, you wear, I had worn them a little more. So, like, the fabric wasn't as thick as it used to be. It was a thin fabric jean, and they were cut off. So they were about calf length, and... I was going, I was in line for Superman, I was at the top of Superman, about to enter the terminal, and I was freezing. I was wearing, um, I remember wearing those, and I remember I used to roll them a little bit, so I had unrolled them, they looked really, really bad, but I had to unroll them because I was cold, so like, this much more fabric would have made me warmer, apparently, in my head, and then I had to, like, 
put my hands inside of my long sleeve shirt, I was freezing. So always bring a sweater and put pants in the car. I don't care who you are. You need pants. I am sorry if you are some lady. Oh, and if you are wearing heels to the park, everyone else who has a season pass stares at you and laughs at you. This is legitly what us season pass holders understand each other. Because we know how things are there, and we know that we know the rules of speculations. We know everything. So we'll be walking across like, heh, that person has a cooler. They're going to cut. We'll look across, heh, that person has heels. Their feet are going to hurt later. Because we know so well. It's just like the people who know Disney and go to Disney all the time. Like the doctor. He's been to Disney how many freaking times? And so if I walked into Disney in my cutesy little outfit, he'd probably stare at me like, Pfft you're going to get a sunburn on those shoulders, like, <laughs> like because you're used to your park, you know the climate, you know everything about your park after a while, and you know your park so well that you're just like, <sighs> you shouldn't be wearing heels. You have a really, really, really short skirt, and in the pictures, they're going to see down it. Um, <laughs> like, all those crazy things. So, don't wear heels. Don't wear a too tight outfit. Please don't show too much skin. Like, there are certain things. Um, they used to have a rule, they're not as bad about this, but they used to have a rule that if you weren't wearing enough clothing, they would tell you to go, like, if you just clothe, like, they would tell you to, like, either get a shirt or put on, or, like, go out and get a shirt or something. <laughs> just put on more clothing. They don't do that so much anymore. I guess people get angry. I don't know. It's kind of funny to watch people, them going up to the person, like, you need more clothes. You need to go to your pharmacy. And everybody else who had season passes and understood the rules and regulations would be like, <laughs> you got in trouble. It'd be like in school when you've got that new kid everyone's picking on. They're just like, new kid, man. You're riding your bike on the sidewalk. Principal's going to see you. They're going to yell at you. And the principal goes up and yells and like, told you so. Like, you just know the rules and you just know things. Um, There are certain rules and regulations. If you have a pocket knife, <laughs> oh my gosh, my stepmom's dad's like my step-grandfather. I don't know what you call him. Anyways, so my grandpa. Went to Six Flags. He always he was in the he was tin can sailors navy all that. He had always carried a pocket knife on him. When he like, if you guys carry a tool like that and you're so used to it, you don't realize that there's a pocket knife in your pockets. And so he had a pocket knife in his pocket. He did not know to take it out of his pocket like when he went through the went through the metal detectors just because he's used to having it in his pocket at all times. It was just one of those things he threw in his pocket in the morning. Like you know how guys sometimes have like. Like, money that they just kind of throw in their pocket, go on, like, the rest of their day, like, grab your wallet. You have, like, basically, from what I hear is he had this little spot on, like, his side table dresser, or whatever. He just had things that you put in your pocket. Like, guys have that. Where girls have their purse full of things, guys just have, like, this pile of junk that they just throw in their pockets. From what my brother has told me, he's got, like, this little, he's got this little spot where he's got his glasses, he's got his wallet, he's got keys, he's got, like, this entire po pile of junk he just needs to throw on himself before he leaves the house at any given point in time. And if you don't have every single item, they freak out. Just, like, if it's the same thing as, like, if we didn't have our purse, we'd be like, oh, my gosh, I forgot my purse. Now I don't have my keys, my glasses, I don't have this, this, this. Like, there's, like, a whole list of things you no longer have. So he was just used to having it in his pocket. So he just walked through, and they yelled at him, like, sir, you need to report it back to your vehicle. You are carrying a concealed weapon. Blah, 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 blah. The knife was this big. It was just like a Swiss Army knife. He also had a screwdriver and a pair of scissors, which are also apparently not. And we were just like, oh, my gosh. And, and of course, if, like, you know, if they're – more elder, like, they weren't old, they were just, like, more elderly, just kind of wanted to watch us, like, in the park, take some pictures kind of thing. It wasn't like they were going to sit there and write every single ride. Although I hear that they rode, um, the wizard one of the days we took them. I don't think I was there for that, but I think that they, um, my dad took them to the park and they rode the wizard together, which I would have loved to watch. Um, old people on roller coasters, I think, makes me laugh. Anyways, just because it's the weird, like, you don't hear about those things. Like, if you saw... Your grandpa just writing down, I don't know what that is. Anyways, just riding down the road on a motorcycle, you'd probably be like, what the heck is that? Um, so it was kind of interesting, but, you know, like, oh my gosh, we got to go back to the car. We got to do this. So, you know, so make sure you're not carrying those things you're used to carrying. Um... Other than that, make sure 
you need a bag of some sort. Yes, they have pickup at the end of the day for like souvenirs and stuff, but sometimes there's things that you just want with you, like a sweater, whatever, whatnot. Um, keep it in your bag. Sunscreen, keep it in your bag. You know, chapstick. There's things you need, or like you know yourself, if you need a certain thing. Like some people, okay, which I have not tried yet. My aunt is notorious for this. This is probably in her bag. That there's this stuff. I think it's made by Bird's Bees or another company like that, where it's like, you can use it as lip gloss, you can use it like on your cuticles, it's like this cream stuff, you can use it like on drier skin, I wanted to try it, um, but anyways, like if you do that, think that would be something in your bag, um, if you have a little fold, like those umbrellas that fold up to this big, like my grandma used to have, um, that might be in there, a poncho, I'm trying to think, because there's so many regulations, I'm like, what can you actually bring that you need, um, your passes, of course, or your stub or whatever. So basically, I'm trying to look, like, I have, like, all my stuff here. So, if I was going, I'd hurry up. My season pass, this is actually my season pass. This is the lanyards from last year, you got them, you know. So this is my season pass from last year. This year, I just like to keep them together. So, season pass. Sunglasses, you have to have sunglasses. Don't wear them on the rides, though. A hat if you're a hat person. Um, sweater. What else did I usually put in? Chapstick. A charger. If you do a Morphe or a power pack, I highly recommend them for the parks because your battery drains really fast because it tries to search for signal. If you do not have a Ryzen, like I do, I got lucky. Verizon gets really good signal there, which is really funny because their caretaker, like their their partnered with Sprint, so it actually makes me giggle. But anyways, they have a cell tower not that close to Verizon, so Verizon's easy to do. Um, get a more a power pack if you have one. Bring it with you. Make sure you have the cables in it. Throw that in your bag. Um, otherwise, there are places to charge your devices in the park. There are. There's a place called the Cyber Cafe that does Wi-Fi. There's also charging ports randomly. My mom has found them. She's really good at finding the power sources. That's why she has to charge her phone. But, um, power parks that are easier because you can charge your phone when it's in your backpack. Like if you're on a ride and you need to charge your phone, you can do that. Um, sorry, my video is really, really long today, apparently. I was not expecting that. To occur. Anyways. Um, so, and then the cord that connects, of course, the power pack to your phone, unless you have a really, really expensive, cool power pack that I don't have that, um, allows for cordless, and if you have that, please tell me where you've got it from, because I have not found one that isn't really, really expensive that someone could have. Lotions or creams if you need that. Hand sanitizer. A lot of people bring hand sanitizer and are crazy about hand sanitizer. Um, there are plenty of bathroom places to wash your hands. It's not like that big of a deal. They are the cleanest park on earth. Actually, they have been nominated as one of the cleanest parks. Sorry, guys. Like, like, it's atrocious today. The scariness of wanting to die on me because they just do. I don't know why. Um, if you need, like, medications or whatever, throw that in your bag. Chapsticks. Did I mention chapstick? Chapsticks are very important to me when I'm going to the parks. Um, a hat if you're a hat person. A hair tie. If Even if you don't like your hair tied up, after a whole day of being at the park, you will want your hair tied up because it gets hot. And then, like, when your hair sits on your neck, if you're that one type of person, then you're not going to want that. Um, as far as dressing, layer. Layer, layer, layer. Um, glow sticks. If you are me and you love to bring glow sticks every single visit, even if it's only 7 o'clock and it's not going to get dark enough for them, you're going to want glow sticks. Um, actually, Six Flags is a good place to bring glow sticks because at night it gets dark. Um, it's not like they don't have light. It's just, it's darker um, in the park just because of the type of lights they have for theming and things. It's just dark, so you're able to see the glow sticks. Unlike if you're going to Disney and you wanted glow sticks and glow items, you couldn't really see them because there was so much light. Um, especially during Fright Fest, everything is like, the lights, they change to like red, and it's just like really dark, so it's good to have glow sticks. Um, and I like them, and they make me happy. Um, so that's important as well. Alright, I'm just like getting over this whole like, sleep deprivation issues and allergies and everything all at once, so kind of crazy today. Anyways. Medication. I think like what else? I keep like saying the same things over and over. I'm trying to think of what else you physically have to have. 
do not forget, um, if you are leaving the park, you must get a hand stamp. Remember to get stamps, otherwise they're not going to let you back in without that stamp. And even if you have a season pass, um, it's already been scanned once, so it'll say that you're already there. They do that basically, so that way not more than one person goes through their gate, you know, that kind of thing. Um, if you have a season pass, I don't know if they do the same thing with day passes. If you have a season pass, you have to scan the pass and then put your... I did my index. Some people do different fingers. I think it's either your thumb or your index finger. You have to put on the machine, so that way you can scan your fingerprint make sure it's actually you um, that is doing it. Things like that. If you do not ride the rides for whatever reason, if you don't like them, whatever, whatnot, make sure that you have something to keep you occupied. Because unless it's like Fright Fest where there's everything going on and like there's shows and things, but you might still get like a little bored after a while of waiting for people and things like that. So something to kind of keep you occupied. Occupado. Um, sometimes the waits are as long as an hour and a half to two hours long, and so sometimes it's I've waited for Raging Bull before for three hours straight during Fright Fest during peak Fright Fest. Um, so and if you are a Six Flags person and a pass holder and all that, you understand that there are peak seasons. There is regular season, which is when anyone, when you can go through the park at any time. Like right now, it's not regular season yet. Um, it's just due to companies and things. So they have like a company season, they have regular season, peak season, Fright Fest, and Fright Fest peaks. Fright Fest peak season, just like how there's peak season for other parks as well. Um, their peak season. Depends on the day, depends on how cold it is and everything. Um, you can have a week where it's not peak season and then peak season all of a sudden. Um, and usually at the beginning when they're first opening and stuff, it's peak and then it kind of wears off. Like this weekend and the next weekend are probably going to be peak weekends. But it's going to wear off a little bit until the kids are out of school and then it's going to be peak like a long time. And then when it gets to August time and when they start getting ready for Fright Fest, then it's going to like slow down, and then when it's Fright Fest time, um, when it first starts, it's not going to be as bad. When Fright Fest really rolls around till the end, it's going to be peak. So you have to watch out the times you're going, watch the weather, because if the weather isn't going to be as good, or if it's going to be cold, there's going to be less people, um, things like that, just typical things to remember. Um, if Mother's Day, Father's Day are really good times to go, because a lot of people have other things going on those days, they have like brunches, dinners, things like that specially done, so they aren't as bad. Um, when you go during holidays, it's either really good or really bad. It depends on the holiday. Some people have said that when you go on 4th of July, it just, there's no one there. It's really, really good, whatever, whatnot. Some people say that it's atrocious. When we went this last year, it was atrocious. When we went years before, it was fine. Um, they do have a nice fireworks show, so if you're like our town doesn't really have much going on for 4th of July. If your town doesn't have much going on for 4th of July, it might be a good idea for you because they do that special fireworks show and all of that. So um, other times they have, they have a Latino fest. They've got different festivals that change all the time. So I don't want to say like a lot of festivals they might not have this year. They usually have a Mardi Gras festival where they have got like Mardi Gras things going on. Plus they've got like... Um, Mardi Gras cuisine, like they, you can get beignets, things like that. Um, try some gumbo, like they've got special vendors. You can purchase things um, from little carts, things like that. I'm not gonna say really much anymore. Fright Fest is every single year, and I want to see like too many, and then be like, oh, Ariel, they didn't have this. Oh, that's because it changes every single year. You never know if they will or will not have that. Um, Latino Fest seems to be an ongoing one. Um, Chevy is one of their big. Sponsors, I don't know if they're still going to have it, but usually they have, like, test things for Chevy, all the stuff for Chevy. You can see cars, things like that going out with Chevy all the time. Chevy is continuously there. They're, like, there every single time. Um, I'm trying to think of what other company is majorly. Um, Takis. Coca-Cola. They do do Coke Freestyle there, if you're familiar with that. So stuff like that. Um, I'm sorry this video has gotten really, really long, but there's so many things that you need to keep in mind and think of. That's why I'm doing a week's worth and beyond of preparation for it. Um, and plus explaining why, you know, I've been here, things like that. So those videos always get longer if I've been here for a while. So, I'm Ariel Vine. Pack your bags. 
because this week we're going on a field trip. See you later, guys. Bye!